How's it going everybody? Welcome back. So today we are going to be working on getting the receiver for the truck right. And the whole time that's going to be running. I'm trying to run the blazer out of gas because I need to drop the gas tank on it because the fuel sending unit is bad and the gas gauge doesn't work. So what I'm going to do is I want to run that out of gas so I can drop the tank and then I can um, measure because there's two different tanks that come in there. Um, I think I've got the bigger tank since it's a V6 because it comes with a four cylinder or a V6. I'm pretty sure I got the bigger tank but I need to check. Then I'm going to order me a sending unit and I'm going to order me um, aftermarket gauge because the stock gauges are all messed up and all that kind of stuff so we're going to go ahead and um, order like auto meter gauge that will work with that but I have to get the new sending unit to find out how many ohms the tank sending unit runs at so I can order the right auto meter sending unit for that. Alright now on to the receiver for this and this is for the Silverado because we're gonna wire that thing up to basically to tow. Now I got this receiver right here the other day for $20 this is off of a um an obs which is a um no nbs this is a new body style silverado so doesn't exactly fit on my obs silverado the difference is the frame is wider so this is where it sits stock on this receiver well on a obs my truck it moves it sits about here my frame is like six inches narrower so what i did is i went ahead and cut this off is i cut the welds all the way around on this and so that way now i can move it in so what i'm going to do right now is go ahead cut the welds off that and get it cleaned up just like this one then we'll go bring the truck up into the driveway and we will mount it to the frame where it belongs and then we'll center this underneath the truck and then we'll basically have it all cleaned up and we'll be able to weld it back on so basically all i'm doing is taking the the, the mounts and sliding them both in about three inches to match the obs silverado work perfect no issues and plus, like this one, it's only welded on one side. This side isn't welded at all. But when I do it, I'm gonna go ahead and weld around both sides so it'll be just as strong as before. Then after that, we have to get um, the wire harness. So I need to order um, a wire harness. I already have the um, brake controller right here. So I need to order the seven pin and the wire harness to run the whole truck for trailer brakes because yes we are getting a trailer soonly after we buy another project I know haven't even got really started on that don't worry got a lot of stuff coming all right so let me go ahead get this cut it's gonna take about a half an hour then I'll get back with you okay it's the next day well, I got both sides are cut off and they're loose. They're just kind of sitting in there right now. This is a lot narrower than what it's supposed to be. They're gonna be like about right here. So I've already got them both cut off. Got a ground on the middle. Might need a little more cleaning because you can kind of still see, you know, a little bit of paint on, on them. But for the most part, they're clean. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna jack the truck up, get it on the ramps, something up in the air and then we're going to get under and test fit it so i don't know how many of the bolts line up i know at least this front one will and then the rest we'll figure it out as we go because kind of making this up as we go so let's go ahead get the truck up in the air and get under and see how this fits 
Sorry about all the noise. We got a lot of noise going on. People cutting grass. I got my fan going. But. So underneath the truck. I have it bolted with a factory bolt right here. And then just a regular bolt right here. Yes, I'm going to get grade 8 bolts on this. So don't worry. This is just some piece of crap. Now, it is completely centered underneath the bumper. I've measured everything. So now, I need to get under here and weld some of this as much as I can. I'll probably go down the front and down the back here on both sides. That'll kind of basically lock it in place. Then I can pull it out from underneath here, get it in the garage, and weld the thing completely up. And it fits perfect underneath there. I mean, it's just the way it want, needs to be. And then when I put a, uh, whew, man, it's hot. Put a hitch on here, it will be a lift hitch, which I'll show you that in a little while, which one I'm putting in here. All right, so let's get the welder out and get the weld. Got it out of the truck. Let me turn this fan off. Kind of cut some of the air noise down. Okay. So, got it out of the truck. Started welding. Got, so, you know, a little weld on the bottom. Backs. Now, we need to take our time and burn it all the way around on both sides. And that's going to be a lot of welding. I mean two so I mean each one of these are two so two four six eight inches around on both sides again it's hot as crap what's today like another 97 degree weather day or something like that so let's go ahead we're gonna get this burned in completely and then we'll mount it back under just to make sure everything does fit good and then I guess we need to run to the store and pick up four grade 8 bolts. Because the one that goes in the front right here is the factory. I had to cut around a freaking stud that was in there that was helping with the frame. So it's on both sides. So this is factory. And then these two are grade 8 that I gotta go to the store and buy. So we need to go to the store, get half inch by whatever, one inch, one and a half, grade eight bolts. All right, so let's go ahead, get this welded, and I'll show you the end product. Woo! I had to take a break for a minute. But man, look at them well. Stacking some dives, give or take. When it's out in the open like this, it's a lot easier to weld than underneath the truck. So, welds look 10 times better right here. Alright, let's go ahead, let's get this finished. Okay, it's all weld. So, all the way around on both sides. And I mean, everywhere all the way around so again in a previous video a long time ago i use a, Le a lincoln electric um pro core 125 it is a flux core i don't have gas i mean as you see no gas some people knock it i've been using flux core my whole life that i've been welding and i've welded oh countless mini trucks Full trucks and I mean like complete frames everything so I don't have no issue with it I started off with a $87 welder from Walmart and moved up and I have no issues with it it's always held I've never had no problems with flux core so there it is now this thing is smoking hot that burnt my finger so we're gonna let this cool which will be overnight 
and then we're going to after work tomorrow paint it put it on it'll be slightly permanently attached the front bolts will be in the back ones will be in I'll replace them all as soon as I can get to the store but all that's left now is basically paint it get it installed and we gotta hitch on the truck now we need a good trailer all right catch you tomorrow all right well it's the next day and i don't know how much we're gonna get done because right now it it just stopped raining but it is gonna start again we're actually like you know is that hurricane or whatever is coming our way we're supposed to get like really a lot of rain for the next few days so we're just gonna we're gonna paint this right now and if once this dries if i have some time i might just go ahead and lay down get this thing installed we'll see if it starts raining then i guess we're not gonna get this installed we'll just have to pick it up in another video i don't know but let's go ahead start getting this painted because it needs all of this covered up and i'm just gonna paint the whole thing And I'm not worried about getting paint on my welding table because I can just go over it and scuff that up and get it back to... Well, that one's out. I knew it wasn't going to last long. But I can, you know, scuff the table up, get a little piece of sandpaper, scuff it up, get the paint off of it. Not a big deal. All right, let me go ahead, finish painting this, and I'll show you after I get it all painted what it looks like. Well, and basically, right when I almost got done with painting, it this is down for me. I mean, you can see over there, the sky is just black. Well. I think we might have to end this video here because I don't think I'm going to get a free moment. But there's my hitch. I mean, it is done. It just needs this side to dry. Then I need to flip it over and paint the other side. So basically, it's done. Now, the total cost. Oh, oh the Larry ain't too loud. The total cost of this is hitch cost me 20 bucks modifying it that's just time but that don't cost nothing um i gotta go to the hardware store and pick up four grade eight bolts that's gonna run me 10 15 dollars so the total on this will be what 20 35 30 35 dollars somewhere around there for changing a nbs receiver to an OBS receiver I've done this before where taking one receiver for one thing and changing it up a little bit and fitting it on something different this is the second time I've done it hey it works and this is gonna work perfect so next we need to which we'll do off camera we'll get this mounted we're gonna go ahead and get the wiring harness ordered for this and then I will do that on the video later when I get the wire harness and all that kind of stuff in and show you how to wire up um, a trailer brake module and all the wiring for this. It's not that hard. So we will be doing that in another video. All right, well, if y'all are on the East Coast, I know this storm's gonna be hitting everybody within the next couple days. So stay safe, keep dry. All right, catch you in the next video.